Hey guys, welcome back to PRK Radio. Today, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about a uh, relatively inexpensive go bag or portable setup. Actually, it could be, for a new ham, it could be your only HF setup. Uh, anyway, I want to jump over here on the workbench and show you guys uh, just a really inexpensive way to put together uh, a portable kit for HF radio uh, for doing parks on the air, uh, maybe even summits on the air, um, worldwide flora and fauna, whatever uh, you're into, it's portable operations. This kit, I believe, could work for you, and it is relatively inexpensive. And when I say that, I mean it's well under a thousand. It might even be under eight hundred dollars here. So why don't we jump over here on the workbench and I'll show you what I have. All right, guys, we're here on the workbench or my desk, however you want to call it. Um, <laughs> so this is what I would call a pretty minimalistic uh, and, and very cost effective portable solution to go and do parks on the air or just to go operate portable someplace outside of your house. Um, and I say this is fairly cost effective because this whole kit is well under a thousand dollars and that's radio and battery and everything you need to get on the air so let's kind of go through the bits and pieces um, where i can i will actually leave affiliate links in the description below for a couple of these items that you can buy on amazon um, these affiliate links these affiliate links uh, give me a small commission don't cost you any extra and it helps out the channel so i would appreciate it if you use my link um, but uh, this is just a pretty simple little, very inexpensive, like a $30 sling bag I got off of Amazon. Not anything, you know, super high tech, uh, but it gets the job done and it holds everything I need. Um, I do have the battery sitting out here and uh, a little uh, uh, power meter or a watt meter. So um, not 100% needed, but I do recommend them. Um, you don't have to get the PowerWorks one either. There's, I don't know, several of these on Amazon. Um, I'll try to leave a link to one of these in the description below if I can find it. Um, and the battery is just a 12, out, 12 amp hour bio battery. Um, uh, we'll start on the outside so I can get it out of the way. I'm just using RG316 uh, with BNC connectors and built-in chokes right on the coax. Uh, seems to work really well for me. You'll see why I'm choosing these ends uh, here in a minute when I show you the antenna. But... Uh, this this coax cable is thin, super lightweight. Uh, yeah, it kinks up really bad, so it's kind of a love-hate relationship with RG316, but it works really well, um, and it doesn't take up a lot of space on the bag. I actually hang mine right out here on the outside of the bag. So let me take that off and get it out of the way, though, because it'll just flop all over the place. All right. So um, in the bag, in the main compartment, is the radio and the radio is the Yaesu FT891. This is what I believe to be a fantastic entry level radio, right? And why is that? Well, this radio is well below a thousand bucks. You can pick these up for honestly under 700. You can get this for like 630 bucks, I think, 629 most of the time. Great radio. Um, it's 100 watts. Um, it is not a, an SDR. It does not have a fancy waterfall and it doesn't have a tuner. And I know a lot of people are going to go, well, yeah, but it doesn't have those things. I thought when I first got into this that I needed those things as well. And the more I did uh, POTA activations, the more I realized I don't really look at that waterfall all that much. Um, it's pretty, it's cool, um, but I don't, uh, I don't look at it all that much. And you'll see by You'll see the antenna that I'm going to show you here in a minute, why I don't need a tuner. Um, and it's the way I recommend, at least for a new ham, to, uh, to start operating because it's just one less um, failure point in your kit, right? Um, if you keep your kit as minimalistic as possible, you're removing the risks or, or mitigating the risks of a failure. So this radio does everything I need it to do. Um, and honestly, I could argue that this radio would be a perfect all-around radio for a first ham, for a new ham. Um, even a technician, you can get on 10 meters with this and have fun. Uh, and you can do FT8 with this with it, just a couple more pieces. Um, so you could really kind of get your feet wet into HF while you're a tech, while you're studying for that general. So that is the radio. And I'm gonna set this over out of the way. 
Um, this other little piece is not needed, but I got this idea from another ham tuber, um, uh, Whiskey Six Oscar Bravo Bravo. You get a chance to check out his channel; it's really cool. Um, this is just a little tent, like a, a a picnic table tent. It's tiny. It's this little dome tent that pops open, um, and he would put his he puts his radio and his laptop inside of it, and it keeps the glare and and whatnot off of his radio. Also. If it starts to maybe drizzle a little bit on him, his gear doesn't get wet, so he has time to kind of pack it up without having things get wet. So this is a cool little, um, I don't know, maybe 20 bucks on Amazon. I'll link it in the description below um, if you want to pick one of these up. I haven't actually used it yet. I just got it, but watching the way he uses it, it just made sense, and it's so cheap. I mean, why not just bring it with you? You don't have to have this, though, so I'll set this out of the way. Um, and that is it in the main compartment. You don't need a ton of things. You really don't. Um, here in this small pocket up front, I keep a notepad with me uh, and a pen, and that just helps me take notes real quick or in a pinch, I can log on this if my phone dies or, or whatever, or I'm in a spot where I can't, uh, you know, I don't have good cell coverage and I can't pull up my, my online logger, which by the way is World Radio League. Uh, there is a coupon code in the description It'll save you 10% on your first year's uh, subscription to World Radio League. You absolutely do not need a subscription to World Radio League. You can use the free version, but the subscriptions, uh, the subscription the versions get you more features. Um, so check out World Radio League um, and use my coupon code uh, down in the description to save yourself 10% on your first year's subscription to World Radio League. Um, but I can I can use that as a uh, as a logging or just to make some random notes or whatever i can use a notepad to pen it's always nice to have that with you um and in the front pocket is the antenna and my antenna choice is one of these little small form factor in fed half waves now this happens to be the x antenna um, this one's pretty unique because it has a switch on it so you can switch it from 49 uh to 56 to 64 to 1 depending on uh, the length of your wire and your operating conditions uh, but it works really well for me in the 49 to 1 configuration and this antenna works flawlessly um, it'll handle 100 watts on sideband and i probably wouldn't run more than maybe uh, 25 or 30 watts through it on um, on ft8 but i just know this antenna works great um, i know that there are other ones out there that are the same form factor there's the pack antenna and several others you pick the flavor that you like the best um, I happened to pick this one up and really liked it and just found that it, it just works fantastic. So I have changed out the wire that came with it. I would recommend doing that. I literally, the first time I deployed this antenna, got the wire snagged in a tree and couldn't get it out and ended up having to cut my wire. So, um, kind of a bummer for me, but, uh, I, I just put some B and Tech Go wire on this and it works great. So B and C connector, B and C off the RG316, straight to the radio adapter. You're good to go. So... This is uh, my antenna of choice for a low-cost um, uh, portable antenna, and it's resonant. So I don't need a tuner, which my radio doesn't have. I can get on 40, 20, 15, and 10 with this antenna and operate with no tuner needed. It's fantastic. So can't say enough uh, good things about the Xtenna. Really, really good antenna. Uh, works great for me. So check him out. I believe he sells his antennas on Etsy if I remember correctly. So I'll try to get a link to his uh, his uh, Etsy, Etsy store. Um, but if I can't find a link to his Etsy store, just look for x on Etsy store, and, or on Etsy, and I think you'll find this. So put that over here out of the way. And then, you know, you've got the, you've got the transformer into your antenna. I usually put this, I don't know, four, five, six feet off the ground, and then I run my wire out and in a sloper configuration. So... You can do that a couple of different ways. I happen to use one of these POTA 20 masts. Um, it works really well for me. And I will lean this up in a tree uh, and then have the wire, the other end of the wire connected to it uh, here off the antenna and it works great. I also have one of these, uh, one of these spikes that, uh, what is it? Ham Radio Dude uh, sells on Etsy. And this thing is great because what you can do is flip this around take the spike out put 
put it in here, if I can get my hands to work, and screw this cap back on. And once I stick this in the ground, <coughs> it'll go in the ground up to here, and then I have all of this that I can take the bottom cap off of my off of my mast, and it slides right over this tube, and it is a super snug fit. Um, these black pieces are what you get. You get these two black or these three black pieces here, and the spike, and then you provide your own PVC. You just go down to your local hardware store and you buy half inch PVC, and you cut it to the length that you need. And I just use super glue and glue these two ends on. And now I have this perfect uh, spike system that holds my uh, POTA 20 uh, up in the air without even needing to lean it in a tree or anything. So it works great. Um, can't say enough about this. You can actually see there's still some, uh, some residue on this. I don't know where I used this last, but uh, there's some residue on it from the last time I had it stuck in the ground. But this thing works fantastic. The only thing I would say about these spikes, any of these spikes, um, the one downfall I would say is that if you're traveling like on an airplane, you're probably not going to want to take this <laughs> because the TSA is going to be interested in it. Um, and so they're going to, they're going to want to talk to you. I wouldn't take this on a plane simply because I would be afraid of losing it. And now I have taken the mast, but I just didn't take a spike. Um, I just chose not to bring the, the spike with me, uh, because I didn't want to lose it and lose my money. Right. Um, but this thing's a great option. Um, I can tell you one thing I did take with me, and let me find this really quick. What did I do with it? Ah. Let me get an extra one now. Here it is. So another option for you is uh, the <laughs> these are made by a guy called Peepy -Pee Man, and this is really just a tent stake, and then this 3D printed piece slides in over it, and then you tie off your uh, your string through it. This can slide down, this can stick in the ground, and then this piece here slides in the bottom of your of your mast up to about there. Uh, it doesn't offer you as much, uh, uh, you know, surface area to hold the to hold the mast up, but it does work pretty well to keep the bottom of the mast from kicking out when you lean it into a tree. Because remember, you're going to lean this into a tree. You're going to have a lot of force pulling in one direction with your wire here. So I really just use this as a means to keep the the bottom of the mast from kicking out. And, and lowering the end of the mask as the, as the bottom kicks out, it's gonna lower on you. So I use this sometimes just to do that. I did fly with this. I didn't get any issues with TSA. I'm not gonna say that they uh, they wouldn't have issues with it, but they didn't. Um, and it's really just a, it's a tent stake for a tent. So I can't imagine that no one's ever flown with tent stakes before. So they didn't give me any, any guff about it. So it worked um, and this works great. This works better, uh, this works better but this will work in a pinch to keep the mask from just sliding out on the bottom. So that's an option as well. Uh, and I believe he sells these on, I wanna say Etsy, but I'm not 100%, but you can get these. Uh, maybe I'll try to find a link and leave it in the description below. But that is my portable operation. 12 amp hour battery, some sort of power meter if you have it. Um, I do recommend it. It's not 100% needed, but I recommend these. Um, Obviously, the star of the show is the radio, the Yaesu FT891. You got to have an antenna, you got to have a radio, you got to have power. That's pretty much all you need. You can, well, and excuse me, you have to have coax. But other than that, you can log on your phone, you can log on paper in a, in a little notepad, and you can make it work for you. So, you know, don't let anybody tell you you have to buy all this gear to go operate POTA. You really don't. For well under $1,000. Um, actually probably under $800, um, you know, with battery and everything, uh, you can get on the air and go activate POTA and have a good time. You don't need to spend a small fortune. This can be your entire shack setup. You could literally pull this off of your, off of your, your shack desk, throw it in a bag with these few pieces, go to the park and have a good time and, and get on the air and, and make contacts and activate your local POTA park. Um, I do it all the time. Uh, this radio is relatively new to me. I had not done POTA with this radio, but I have operated with this radio on the beach uh, in uh, Port A here in Texas, and it worked flawlessly right out of the box. Great radio, about 630 bucks, can't beat it. So anyway, I just wanted to show you guys 
that you don't have to spend a small fortune to put together a nice kit to go operate portable, whether it's POTA, soda, whatever you want. I, you could hike to the top of a mountain with this. It's not the lightest pack in the world, but you could absolutely do it. And I wanted to do a proper outro, so thank you guys so much for tuning in all the way here to the end of the video. Really appreciate all the support with the new channel. Thank you guys so much. Can't do it without you. Uh, if you like this kind of content, hit that like button down below. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you like and what you didn't like. Just be nice about it if you would, please. Um, what else? I don't know what else. Anyway, <laughs> love you guys to death. Take care of each other out there. 7-3.